going, everyone? We are here to review some FanDuel defenses for Week 8. And Jason, we will start off this Week 8 defense analysis with a random question. Um, who had the album in early 2000s slash late 90s called Hot Dog Flavored Water and Chocolate Starfish? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. You don't know. No. You don't know, Jason. This is disappointing. I I thought you were I thought you were my age. I didn't yeah, I didn't, I mean, I didn't I, realize you were 47 years old. I mean, maybe I was just you know, a little limp biscuit action action. I mean, it could just be music that I just didn't listen to at all. I mean, yeah, I I'm happy that you didn't listen to Limp Biscuit, but you should have been there. It's all that, I'm saying. That it's would that I'm would saying. be why. Yeah. yeah. Well, keep rolling. Let's keep keep on rolling, <laughs> rolling, rolling into the cash game defenses. Denver Broncos against the Chargers, five K. Pretty reasonable price for for that type of defense, I'd say. Yeah, it is. I mean, this is a defense you'd see usually priced up 55, 5,600 uh, going back to 2015. Not the case this year with the way they're pricing defenses. Um, 5K is certainly a reasonable home matchup against the Chargers. I, I think this Chargers offense is really, really masked by some opportunistic Melvin Gordon touchdowns, some plays by some average wideouts this year. I don't think this offense, as well as they're, they're holding up and scoring points right now, I don't think that's going to be a case that continues, especially heading into Denver this week. Um, offensive line's still pretty mediocre. Um, they're turning the ball over over two times per game. So I'm looking at the secondary um, you know, to pretty much carry the way here, and this run defense has been pretty solid. Um you know, I don't see Melvin Gordon really getting a ton of a ton of production here this week, even though he's been good on fantasy points paper. You know, Jason, there's two types of people in this world. People that don't like Melvin Gordon and people that uh, don't hate him. <laughs> I, I don't hate him. I, I don't like him, so... Mm. Yeah. No, based based on this analysis, it certainly sounds like uh, you're heading towards the uh, the hate. And you know, it, since we're in 2016, um, I think we should be aware of how we're making others feel. Um, now, I have Melvin on the phone now, um, and he just heard this entire conversation. W would you like to say anything to him um, before we, you know, move on? To yeah, the Jets. I mean, we, we, you could say enjoy your your double digit touchdown season that's coming. It, it'll probably never happen again. Hmm, okay. Well. <laughs> all right. Well. Anyway, uh, Jets against the Browns. I think we all kind of pinpointed this one. Even though the Jets have really given up a ton of chunk plays this year, this Browns team, Kevin Hogan, uh, Stanford Cardinals, Trees are their mascot for some reason and nobody knows why um and that's all you're getting for an intro yeah i, th I mean you you touched on the jets as your top defense cash game heading in uh, for DraftKings, and it was a lot of the same logic that i applied i mean they they suck through the air i mean there's no doubt about it um revis island has been a paradise for for wideouts this year the other corners mm. really haven't done well so um, I think the front seven is still above average. I think the corners are still respectable in the terms of they can match up well with Cleveland. <laughs> so I don't know how that, that applies to any other game going forward, but this is a week where I'm looking to use the Jets. Um, they rank fifth per football outsiders in terms of rush defense. And as you pointed out, there isn't a lot of deep threats down the field. I mean, it is a lot of handing the ball off to Crowell, dump passes to Duke Johnson. Barnage, uh, an average threat down the field, you know, um, Terrell Pryor, they're kind of looking to use in space. He's the only threat, but I mean, he's not really 100% right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not worried at all. I think 4,700 is a reasonable price. Um, no Minnesota defense, which is a bummer. So you do have to go elsewhere. Dude, again, man, they're really killing us. Like, I just want to use them every week. And, you know, obviously the Eagles in week seven were, were the nuts, but yeah. The, the Vikings got put in I, – I can't think of a worse position like seven times in that game, 
and they still scored nine points. Like they are incredible. Yeah. I I don't know. I, I it was just amazing that they salvaged that day with how bad the offense like put them in positions. But uh, I guess that's not relevant to this slate at all, is it? No, it's a bummer. But if you are playing, use Minnesota. Yes, because C- Cutler's back. Yes, sir. Interception, pick six, city. Um, GPPs. You move into the Texans here against the Lions. What are you liking about that? Uh, first, I like the price tag, forty three hundred. Uh, really nice discount from Jets. Even uh, that's a pretty mild price tag to use. Um, matchup here against the Lions. I know Stafford hasn't really turned the ball over a ton this year, which it, it's been kind of abnormal for him but um houston's a team i I do like the secondary i still think the pressure in terms of getting on the quarterback is going to be fine without jj watt um you know you look at the science team they are allowing over two and a half sacks per game you look at the potential for a special teams touchdown as well with will fuller back there um i I like that a lot so i I look at this one I, i think despite the team total that's pretty average for the lions I do think it's going to be a Lamar Miller, Houston Texans type game. Obviously, you're going to see, you know, Brock Osweiler basically just hand this ball off and let Lamar Miller do his thing as long as he's healthy. And, and that's going to keep the way keep away from the, the Lions' high passing attack. So um, I think the corners match up well, even though they are banged up with, with these. So I'm fine with using the Texans in, in GPPs. I dag, I dag. I'm I'm in on that. I'm in on that. We're we're going down with that ship. Let's go Texans. Nice rebound. I just think generally speaking like you know, these two teams were headed in different directions last week. I just think this is such a good contrarian move. Lions going on the road, Texans at home after a beatdown. I I just think there's a lot of things pointing in the right direction. Um, for for a good fantasy output. Next one here, Chiefs and Colts. Now, this might be the first one where I'm sort of drifting away from you here, sliding into the uh, the, the bushes like Homer Simpson. Uh, w- what are you looking at here? Yeah, I think a lot of us are. And, and you know, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm going to have some Andrew Luck, T. Y. Hilton shares. You know, I, I am against this this Chiefs defense that's been pretty average. You, you take away that Fitzpatrick game. They haven't been tremendously great this year. Um, their ability to get the pressure, get pressure on the quarterback, has been really disappointing. But that's where I think everything's going to hinge. Um, if Luck's under pressure a ton, if this offensive line that's really been bad this season, uh, allowing over three and a half sacks per game, if they can get beat by this Kansas City off defensive line, then I, I think Luck's going to be in trouble. I think there's a multi turnover game coming. If the offensive line holds its own, Luck will have a field day. So I think it's re- that's going to be the making make or break point for this defense. Um, can they get pressure on Luck, which other teams really have so far this season? Um, and when they do, that puts Luck in an awkward spot, especially with the weapons around him. Dante Moncrief is expected to practice Wednesday. Curious to see his Week Eight status. Oh, you just you just lighted up my life. I did not know that. Are you serious? Yeah, he's expected to practice. Yes. So if that's the case, I. I'll, I'll downgrade this Chiefs defense tremendously, probably to not really playable. But if if he sits out, I, I think that's going to be enough because Dorsett's still not 100%. You know, Kansas City's really good against tight ends. They have been for the last year and a half. Jack Doyle, not a must play like he was last week for me. Um, so I, I, I think, you know, both these sides are going to be kind of intriguing correlation plays in terms of, you know, Spencer Ware, Kansas City defense. You can use that route too. Well, when you you look at this game, I mean, you mentioned it. it. The Chiefs can afford to have Andrew Luck do the comeback mode thing. You know, if they're getting sacks, if they're getting turnovers, which the Colts have been very susceptible to this year. So you mentioned it. You know, if the O-line can't hold up, which I can't imagine they will, uh, I, I think this could be a weird one of those weird games where like the defense can score well, but still like give up 350 passing yards. I, I, so I think, I think the chiefs do have some upside. I just worry, you know, I saw luck last week. He looked engaged uh, and the Titans are an improved defense this year. And he was just paid, basically paid Manning out there. So uh, it, while I think the chiefs are better, I think it's something to be a little worried about. Yeah, it's it's certainly boomer bust this week for for really both sides. I think if you don't want to go with that one, I think this one's very intriguing. Uh, Cardinals forty six hundred against the Panthers. What are you looking at there? 
Yeah, I mean, you look at the Panthers. I mean, turning the ball over nearly three times per game. Cam Newton just doesn't look like last year's Cam Newton. Time possession's been a little bit awkward for them this year. Um, Arizona's traveling across the country, but you know what? I'm not going to be completely worried. I think that's what makes them a GPP play for me, though, because I I like them that week against Buffalo, um, and they did not look good. Um, So this could be the case, too. And you look at Carolina, they definitely have more weapons than Buffalo does. So... um, I can definitely see this one being a high upside game. I mean, you look at a lot of playmakers on that side. I mean, Patrick Peterson, um, you know, Tyron Matthew. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys are just, you know, phenomenal playmakers in terms of, of creating turnovers. And, and as you stated, I mean, Cam Newton leading the league in, in interceptions right now. So um, they haven't been good. I, I think Kelvin Benjamin's a guy who could go missing this week. Same thing with Craig Olson. So I, I like Cardinals. I think they're borderline cash, but I, I like the Jets and Broncos just a little bit more. Certainly agree. Yeah, no, this is this is the vibe I'm getting. Um, any other little tidbits before we head out? I don't think so. Um, I mean, maybe keep an eye on Houston's defense in terms of the injuries. I, I know there were a couple hobbling guys walking off the field last, last night for the Monday night game. Oh, uh, so that if that's the lineman, case. Man. Oh, dude, that was absolutely brutal. That that's that was legit upsetting. Normally injuries are just like, all right, you know, he'll be fine. This one's like, damn. Everyone just kind of, even if you're a Broncos fan, it's just like, wow. That's yeah. that's not fun. No, that was yeah, that was upsetting. Well, thanks for bringing us out on a really sad note. Um, shout out to that guy's family. Um, you better be bringing him some chicken noodle soup or something terrible or mediocre to, to the hospital. Um, anyhow, if you like what we're doing here, give us a like and subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. If you want to read Jason's article, check that out on dailyfantasycafe.com. If you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, our Twitter, Twitter handles are in the, uh, the uh, thing here, right, right on the bottom screen here. Uh, I, I'm just, that's what we're going to get for plugs today. So, uh, we will head out and as always, we'll see you guys next week.